Hi, Rod Kane uh, with the Washington Grand Company, and I'm here once again to talk to you about my favorite ancient medieval uh, miniatures game, Triumph. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different because we're going to talk about how do I take Triumph and uh, use it for fantasy. Um, we, we are working on what I'll call an official set of rules for fantasy, uh, but in the meantime, while we're working on that, we do have some draft rules, and I want to talk a little bit about those because I would encourage people to, to use Triumph to play their favorite fantasy battles. It doesn't take a lot of modification. Um, so if you think of Triumph as the base set of rules, uh, the core rules for your troop types and how you maneuver and how you move on the table and how you resolve combat, um, how do I add fantasy concepts? Well, you've already seen, I think, on Meshwesh, the battle cards for the historical armies. So we've added in battle cards to do some specific flavor for specific troop types. Uh, certain time periods, certain battles require a little bit of adjustment from the basic troop types. So, for example, uh, to represent the late Theban armies in the uh, hoplite world, we have the deep hoplite formation, which was adopted prior to um, the movement to the pike formation, the pike phalanx. And that adjusts the existing heavy foot uh, troop type, and that's a battle card. Well, for Fantasy Triumph, we have a similar list of battle cards that we're working on uh, and, and rules to go with those. And in Fantasy Triumph, um, the idea is to add in those features that would give you the kind of flavor while still keeping it um, a mass fantasy battle game, but letting you adjust the troop types to create that flavor you want for Lord of the Rings. So if you want goblins and orcs, if you want wolf riders, um, if you want flying creatures, so if you want Valkyries, uh, for example, here's 28 millimeter and 15 millimeter version of Valkyries. If you want a giant, which is monstrous um, uh, in size. So the idea is that you're gonna start with a basic troop type. So for example, um, let's take the Goblin Horde. Uh, goblin Horde, uh, I like to make my Goblin Horde fierce, uh, which makes them even cheaper um, than a typical Horde, because fierce means that they always follow up in combat. Um, so as you can see, it's not even a, 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 a modification that requires a lot of stretch and rules, because we already have units that follow up in combat. Uh, when it comes to uh, the trolls, for example, these trolls are behemoths, which means you can start with an elephant. Um, so they basically fight and, and function like an elephant, but you might make them um, uh, uh, slow, or you might make them tough. Uh, tough is uh, a added adventure, uh, added bonus against missile fire. Um, a lot of troop types will convert pretty straightforward. So, for example, these orc warband, um, they're just straight up uh, warband. If you want to make them um, deadly. Uh, deadly would be an advantage where they get a plus one in combat. Uh, goblin Wolf Riders. Um, I love the Goblin Wolf Riders. Uh, what we do with these is we make them slow, so a little bit slower than horses. Uh, we make them fierce, so they always fall up. We start with a basic Jav Cav uh, concept because Jav Cav seems to fit the concept of a close in fighting kind of uh, Wolf Rider. And we also give them, you can give them things like woodland creatures. So if your world, the wolves are coming from the forest, uh, woods become open terrain. Now all of these will have pluses and minuses to their point costs, but um, it lets you kind of develop the balance of the army. But it gives you that flavor of a wolf rider. So these are javelin cavalry, basic troop type. They're slow, so they only go six instead of eight. Um, that takes them down in point cost. They have fierce, which also takes them down in point cost. And then they have Woodland creature with us and run through the woods in formation as if it was open terrain, and that puts them up in point cost. Um, but Elven Heavy Cavalry, uh, I like to run mine as cataphracts, so these are actually run as a cataphract. Uh, no specific changes to those. Uh, here I have some uh, horse bow mounted as wood elves, and I give these the woodland creature, which means they can they can move through the woodlands um, easier. Elven Pavis, so this is just a unit of Pavis with elves. I don't really need to make that many modifications of troop type. Um, we also have some uh, more science fiction uh, type creatures. So for example, I have a large stompy robot here. Um, this I, I run as a cataphract for the basic unit. Um, and then I give it tough, which means that it's hard to shoot at. And this one has a feature called up. 
uh, what is up? Up represents off battle movement, so or off battlefield movement. So this this guy with his jump jets has the ability to go high in the air and then come back someplace else on the battlefield. Not quite what we call flying, um, but the ability to basically reappear on the battlefield someplace else on the battlefield. And that could be representing things like flying ability in general. So for example, Valkyries could go high in the air off the battlefield and up. Uh, it could represent tunneling, it could represent teleportation. So for example, this guy here, which is Cthulhu, uh, he would have up as well maybe, but it's teleportation. Um, unit of uh, heavy science fiction tanks with shielding, we call these Pavis in, in, in the army that I've created. So what I wanna encourage you with is that um, you can take the basic set of rules and the basic troop types, and you don't have to change the rules or how you play the game to go right into the fantasy or the sci-fi uh, genre. Um, you just have to figure out creative ways for how you want to flavor the troops. And um, we're gonna be putting out some of these draft rules, I think in the near future, uh, so you, we can show you what we're playing with. Obviously, if you're playing with your own figures, your own game at home, or you're putting on a convention game, you can modify and adjust the rules however you like. But we, we hope to come out with a set of kind of standardized base rules for fantasy so that we can also have um, fantasy uh, events where people meet up with their fantasy armies and everybody um, has a certain framework of the rules in which to play in. And so we know what to expect. So you can, you can bring your, your, your stompy robot army or your um, orc army or elf army within the genre that the tournament it's organized as, and, and you can come and play a game of Fantasy Triumph. Um, and once again, the basic rules aren't gonna change. So the concept of how you play and how you move the troops on the board won't really be affected um, greatly, but the troop types will give you the ability to create those, those flavorful, colorful armies that everybody enjoys playing with. So. Uh, I hope that gives you a good idea of the introduction into Fantasy Triumph and what we're going to be doing with it. And uh, once again, I thank you for watching these videos. Um, the game's called Triumph. Um, this is about Fantasy Triumph. And uh, I hope you'll keep watching and I hope you'll keep playing the game. And I look forward to hearing comments on the uh, forum and the, the video about what people are doing with their own fantasy armies in Triumph. Thanks again.